We like to think we have the answers to everything, or at least that's what our parents tell us. But the world is still a complete mystery, and we actually don't know as much as we think we do. Each country seems to have something they just can't explain. From Stonehenge to the disappearance of ancient civilizations, here are 20 strangest discoveries found on Earth. Number 20. Stone Spheres in Costa Rica if you ever pay a visit to the Diquis Delta and the small island of Isla del Caño in Costa Rica, you might stumble across a few things that make you scratch your head in confusion. These parts of Costa Rica are home to large and small stone spheres, and they are genuinely as random as they sound. There are about 300 of them, and they have been linked back to the Diquis culture, which is now extinct. They settled in the region and established themselves around 1500 to 300 BC during the Sinacra period, and there were many small communities with different tribal organizations. So why the spheres? Well, experts think they were symbols of rank and elevated social and political status. If you visited a village with the largest and most perfect spheres, it was clear that it was a prestigious and important community. The stones reflected the inhabitants and how well established they were. As you might imagine, producing the spheres was a complicated process. They would have taken large stone blocks like andesite, limestone, or sandstone and chipped away at them with stone tools to loosen the layers. The surface was then treated with sand and other abrasives for evenness and to polish them. Once they were made, they were sometimes moved into patterns related to the movement of the sun and heavenly bodies based on the time of the year. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. Any new major construction project is a big deal, and you never know what you're going to find when you start messing with old buildings. But when a construction company in Afghanistan began altering this building, they found what appeared to be a giant safe hidden behind a wall. Nobody knows who built these structures, so no one knows who built the safes. What do you think is hidden inside them? What would you do if you found a massive safe in a wall? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. The Antikythera Mechanism we like to think that we're living in an advanced age, but you might be surprised at our predecessors' capabilities with such limited tools and technology. Take the Antikythera mechanism as an example. This is an ancient Greek mechanical device that would have been used to show and display information relating to astronomical phenomena. It was found in 1901 in a shipwreck that sunk in the 1st century BCE in the Mediterranean Sea. It looks like a rusty bit of debris, but this device is so much more than just debris. Upon closer inspection, Inspection, experts noticed that it had the first known set of scientific dials. They discovered this when they took radiographic images and saw fragments of gear wheels. Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but there haven't been any discoveries of geared mechanisms like it in the ancient world, or even until the creation of medieval cathedral clocks 1,000 years later. The Antikythera mechanism was made out of a bronze sheet, and when intact, would have been about the size of a shoebox. Based on the remaining Greek inscriptions, it would have been used for astronomical and calendar purposes. If you're ever hanging out in Athens, you can see it for yourself at the National Archaeological Museum. Number 18. Shroud of Turin there are plenty of controversial and mysterious artifacts sitting in museums around the world, but perhaps few are as well known or as argued as the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin, or Holy Shroud, is a piece of 14.4 inch by 3.7 inch linen cloth with what appears to be the negative image of a man. The image is faint yellow but seems to be a man's face with a beard, mustache, and shoulder length hair. Some people say it's Jesus of Nazareth and is the burial shroud he was wrapped in after he was crucified. Even hundreds of years later, people are either on Team Fake or Team Real. It really is that controversial. The shroud was first mentioned in 
1354, and the local Bishop of Troyes called it a fake in 1389. However, the Catholic Church has never endorsed or rejected it, and in 2013, Pope Francis said it was an icon of a man scourged and crucified. I guess as a just-in-case measure, it's been kept in northern Italy in the Cathedral of Turin's Royal Chapel since 1578. We have some pretty incredible technology at our disposal, so you can guarantee we've tried to get to the bottom of its origins. Radiocarbon dating in 1988 dates it back to between 1260 and 1390 during the Middle Ages. But believers came up with theories to refute the scientific conclusion, such as biocontamination, medieval repairs, and carbon monoxide. We still don't actually have a proper answer. Answer. Number 17. Qin Shi Huang's Tomb Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of China, known for conquering six warring states to form the unified nation of China. When he died in 210 BC, he was laid to rest inside a tomb surrounded by an underground moat of poisonous mercury. He's been there undisturbed ever since. And I really mean undisturbed, since no one has ever been inside the big hill where he's buried. According to archaeologist Kristen Romy, respect plays a huge part in why no one has attempted to see the tomb, but also because no one has the technology to excavate it properly. But what we do know is that he was buried in the most lavish tomb complex you could ever think of, with a collection of things he might need in the afterlife. Given how much he achieved in his life, his people went all out when it came to his burial, and that's where the Terracotta Army comes in. There are thought to be over 8,000 life-size Terracotta soldiers surrounding Qin Shi Huang's tomb, and while we've dug up about 2,000 of those, we have left the central tomb alone. Number 16. The Accidental Mummy Mummies and Egyptian culture go hand in hand, so to hear that a mummy was discovered is probably not all that surprising. But this is a different discovery altogether. Chinese road workers found a woman in perfectly preserved condition, but she hadn't been intentionally mummified. Plus, she wasn't in Egypt. Road workers in the Jiangsu province of eastern China were widening a road which required digging into the ground. When they got down to about six feet, they hit something solid. Believing it might be significant, they contacted Taizhou Museum archaeologists to excavate it. What they had stumbled across was a tomb that contained a three-layered coffin. The main coffin component consisted of silk, linens, and brown liquid. Beneath the linen were the perfectly preserved remains of a female. She still had her hair, skin, clothing, and even eyebrows and eyelashes. She also had beautiful jewelry, such as a vibrant green ring. The coffin contained ancient writings, relics, bones, and ceramics, and the brown liquid was either a preserving agent or a groundwater that had seeped in. It's not known if the fluid was to preserve her or if the ground was just the perfect temperature to stop bacteria from breaking her down. It's thought that the woman dates back to the Ming Dynasty and might be up to 700 years old. Number 15. Stonehenge Stonehenge is a stone circle monument on Salisbury Plain, north of Salisbury, in Wiltshire, England, and it's one of the world's greatest mysteries. It's random, it's old, and experts have argued its purpose for decades. While we don't have any firm evidence to say it was used for X reason, there are some sound theories, such as a druid temple, a meeting place for chiefdoms, a burial monument, or an astronomical computer. Experts say that it was built in six stages, from the Neolithic period to the Bronze Age, between 3000 and 1520 BCE. As you might expect, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1986. There are many reasons why Stonehenge is unique, but one of the standout factors relates to the stones themselves. They are artificially shaped blocks of Cenozoic silkrete, known as sarsen stones, and they've been arranged in a post and lintel formation, which means two upright stones hold up the third one. The Stonehenge we see today is obviously a lot different than the one that would have been present when it was first built. Some parts have been destroyed or taken away, and time hasn't been kind. However, it is still the most famous stone circle in the world, attracting over a million visitors each year. Number 14. Superhenge you know about Stonehenge, but do you know about Superhenge? Archaeologists haven't finished exploring Stonehenge, even after all this time, so they made another incredible discovery under two miles from Stonehenge. Using ground-penetrating radar, they were able to identify up to 90 standing stones in a row buried under the ground, all in a row. Each stone would have been about 14.7 feet high. However, another archaeological expert who had worked in the area said that their radar signals might not be accurate. He believed the 
the stones were wooden posts, as he had excavated in the same location in the past. Digging was the only way to find out, so that's what they did. In huge pits, they found large wooden posts up to 16.4 feet tall, along with ramps that would have been used to put the poles into the pits. They suspected that there would have been around 100 posts erected in the area in a circle, but some had already been pulled out and filled with chalk when the surrounding bank and ditch were made. The changing and rebuilding of this monument made researchers think that there might have been a change of power at the time, leading to a new direction. Number 13. The Nazca Lines you might think that we've known about giant shapes and pictures being etched into the landscape for centuries, but we've only been researching the Nazca Lines since the 1930s. That's because the images are so large in a region in Peru that they are only visible from above. So when the first planes hit the skies, that was when we were able to see them. The Nazca Lines consist of 2,000-year-old pictures of spiders, birds, plants, lizards, ducks, whales, and even a humanoid-like figure. Scientists think the Nazca people living in the area from AD 1 to 700 created them by removing up to 15 inches of rock to reveal light-colored soil below. Some of the lines are up to 30 miles long, so they would have taken an incredibly long time to create. But why were they created? We can't exactly ask them to find out, so we don't really know, even all these years later. However, American historian Paul Kosak believed that because one of the lines was in the general location of the sun around the winter solstice, they might be astronomy-related. Later, German archaeologists archaeologist Maria Reicha, who investigated the Nazca Lines for 40 years, agreed with Paul. She believed they had calendrical and astronomical meanings, primarily as some of the animal pictures represented groups of stars in the sky. Number 12. The Great Pyramids Name a more mysterious artificial structure than the Great Pyramids of Giza, located about 11 miles from Cairo in Egypt. Bet you can't. They are among the largest pyramids in the world at up to 481 feet tall, and there are still so many question marks over them. The pyramid complex was built between 2550 and 2490 BC, and we're still debating how they were made, why they were built, and what's within them, if anything. The largest pyramid in the complex is believed to have taken up to three decades, and all were made from limestone before being encased in highly polished limestone. Very little of that casing stone remains since it was taken off over the years for use on other building projects. We've made a few incredible discoveries over the years regarding these pyramids, such as King Tut's tomb, but we've made little headway since. Still, science could change that. In 2017, it was announced that scientists were able to use particle physics to see inside the pyramid, and that's when they found a massive cavity over 100 feet long. They don't know what it was for, but the dimensions are similar to the Grand Gallery, which means it could be where the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu is. Number 11. Gobekli Tepe Archaeologists are pretty intelligent people, but they have been known to reach some wrong conclusions. For example, they didn't think hunter-gatherers were capable of making megalithic monuments. However, they were proven wrong when they found the Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, a site that dated back about 12,000 years. The monument in southeastern Turkey is now one of the most significant megalithic sites in the world and changed what archaeologists thought about hunter-gatherers. They believed that farming had to be invented before people actually settled down in communities developed social hierarchies, and created architecture. This massive 1,000-foot-wide, 50-foot monument is proof that they didn't. The first studies of the site began in 1995, and they determined that the area had been used for thousands of years. This seemed impossible to archaeologists, especially as hunter-gatherers didn't have the resources or social hierarchy to construct anything. But as they say, the proof is in the pudding. The Gobekli Tepe is a massive structure with many adjacent stone enclosures. These enclosures are between 30 and 100 feet each and have two 18-foot monolithic T-shaped pillars. The most prominent pillar weighs over 50 tons, and each one may have been covered with a roof for protection from the elements at some point. Number 10. The Copper Scroll Treasure the Copper Scroll is one of the last Dead Sea Scrolls, but it's also one of the most special. It was found in Cave 3 near Kirbet Qumran and was written on copper rather than papyrus or parchment as the other scrolls were. All the other scrolls found contained literary works, but this one was different. Not only was it copper and 1% tin, but it listed locations of valuables like gold and silver that had been hidden or buried. It was basically a treasure map. It was also immediately apparent that it was written in Hebrew 
resembling the Mishnah language rather than literary Hebrew like the other scrolls. The scroll dates back to about 25 to 75 CE, and it's believed that all mentioned treasures had been gathered during the first Jewish war. There are 64 locations, and 63 of them reference silver and gold. Archaeologists think there might be thousands of pounds of treasure in total. Even more exciting is the mention of tithing vessels and a duplicate document with more information. However, no other scroll like it has been found. Most of the treasure would have likely been found by now, but its estimated worth in the 1960s was over $1 billion. Number 9. King Tut's Death King Tutankhamun, who we commonly refer to as King Tut, was a young boy who became a pharaoh of ancient Egypt in 1332 BC at just nine years old. The new title probably couldn't have come at a worse time since the country was engaged in conflicts over land, but he probably had plenty of advisors to help him. But there's a great mystery over King Tut. He died at about age 18, and we don't have hard evidence to suggest how he died. We learned more about King Tut in 1922 when British archaeologist Howard Carter found his tomb in the Valley of the Kings. He spent two years searching the tomb only to uncover another room within it where Howard found a coffin. Upon opening the coffin, he discovered another coffin, and inside this coffin was another one made of gold. It was like nesting dolls made of coffins. Inside that coffin of gold was King Tut, and he had laid there untouched for over 3,000 years. Unfortunately, archaeologists damaged his body when they tried to pry him off the sticky oils coating the coffin, so it was hard to know what led to his death. Some say he was murdered, while others believe he was poisoned. However, modern technologies allow some researchers to think that that he might have been frail and in poor health. He also had a broken leg, which might have led to an infection that killed him if the broken bone didn't lead to his death. Number 8. The Big Circles of Jordan if you happen to be flying over Jordan or Syria, you might notice 12 massive circular stone structures out the plane window. They are over 2,000 years old and were first discovered by a British pilot flying across the deserts in 1920, although we are no closer to finding out what they are or why they are there. After he took photos of the circles, his findings were ignored and no one really looked into them any further. It took another 60 years for them to be found again, and only in the last 10 years have we started taking a closer look luck. The circles are actually low stone walls of about 3 feet high each, and they range in size from 720 feet to 1,200 feet in diameter. They didn't contain any openings when they were built, but age has meant that the walls have crumbled in some parts. They would have been too low to be used as livestock pens, and their shape would have been unnecessary if that was their purpose. Eight of the 12 circles are in West Central Jordan, and four are in Azraq Oasis. The most recent one was found in Syria. Number 7. The Voynich Manuscript the Voynich Manuscript is one of the great unknowns, and it's caused many experts a great deal of frustration. It's an illustrated codex written in an unknown writing system that's now referred to as Voynichese. It's been dated back to the early 15th century and may have been handwritten during the Italian Renaissance. Even all these years later, no one can agree on where it came from, who wrote it, and why it was written. Some people believe it was an unrecorded script for a constructed or natural language, or that it was code needing to be deciphered. Others think it was just a hoax. The manuscript is about 240 pages long, but some pages might also be missing. Some pages are also larger than others and have been folded to conform to the shape of the book. Each page is full of pictures and diagrams, and there's a significant number of fictitious plants, astrological symbols, and images of people. All text throughout the book is from left to right. And that's basically all we know. The manuscript is named after the Polish book dealer Wilfred Voynich, who purchased it in 1912. It's now located at the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University. Number 6. The Hobbits Homo sapiens are the only surviving human lineage, but that's not to say other human species didn't roam the Earth. We've been learning more about Homo erectus, potential ancestors of modern humans who came from Africa about 1.8 million years ago. Now we're learning about a group of possible human ancestors called Homo floresiensis, who are nicknamed the Hobbits. They are given this nickname because they have small bodies, even smaller than Homo luzonensis, thought to be one of the smallest human species. 
They inhabited the island of Flores in Indonesia up until modern humans arrived approximately 50,000 years ago. From the remains we've found so far, they would have stood about 3 feet 7 inches tall. The partial skeletons of at least 9 Homo floresiensis have been discovered so far, which has enabled us to conclude that they are an early species of Homo. Around the areas where the remains were found, archaeologists also discovered stone implements of an appropriate size for them to use. These tools were initially dated from between 95,000 to 13,000 years ago, and modern humans arrived in the area pretty much in the middle of that time. Number 5. The Mystery of San Xingdui A peasant in the Sichuan province of China was repairing a sewage ditch about 24 miles from Chengdu in 1929 when they found jade and stone artifacts. That was pretty cool, but their significance wasn't actually known until 1986 when archaeologists found two huge pits of Bronze Age treasures in that same area. There were hundreds of items like pottery, gold, bronze, jade, sculptures, and a considerable amount of clamshells and ivory. From these artifacts, researchers were even able to learn about a new artistic style they had never seen before. The treasures appear to have been broken and buried as a type of sacrifice, and it's now known that they came from the lost civilization of San Xingdui, a walled city on the Minjiang riverbanks that existed up until around 2800 years ago. Archaeologists were immediately curious about why the well-established city was abandoned, but we might now have the answers we've been searching for. It's thought that an earthquake might have caused landslides that dammed their primary water source and diverted it to a different location. So, not being able to access water, they moved their city to the new river flow. Number 4. Noah's Ark over the years, many people have claimed to have found Noah's Ark, a biblical vessel that supposedly housed two of each animal to save them from a flood or something like that. According to archaeologist Paul Zemansky, he doesn't actually know of any expedition that ever went looking for Noah's Ark and didn't find it, so that doesn't give you much faith when you hear that it was apparently found in 2007 and 2008. Evangelical Christian explorers said they found remains of it beneath snow and volcanic debris on Mount Ararat in Turkey. They were from a group called Noah's Ark Ministries International and said that they were 99.9% .9 sure what they found was the Ark. They said they found several wooden partitions 13,000 feet above sea level near the mountain's peak and returned in 2009 with a film crew. They also stated that radiocarbon dating proved the wood was about 4,800 years old. This would line up with the time of the flood as implied in the Bible. Many Christians believe this particular mountain in Turkey is the Ark's final resting place, but as you would expect, there's been a great deal of skepticism over this discovery. Number 3. The Collapse of Mayan Civilization the collapse of the Mayan civilization is perhaps one of the biggest mysteries. Over 19 million Mayan people formed an incredibly sophisticated society, and yet many of their cities collapsed during the 8th and 9th centuries. Now, of course, all those people didn't just disappear, and many of their descendants still live in Central America, although previously bustling cities were suddenly abandoned ruins. It just doesn't make sense. As you might expect, plenty of theories have been bandied about when we don't have all the answers. Some people say that overhunting, peasant revolt, and foreign invasions were the most likely reasons, while others go down the more supernatural road with aliens and whatnot. Jared Diamond had an altogether different theory in his 2005 book called Collapse. He believed that ill-advised deforestation and a prolonged drought may have resulted in the Mayan people having to abandon their cities. It was a pretty solid idea, so environmental data and archaeological evidence were gathered to see if it was valid. A resultant study discovered that a rapid rate of deforestation for agriculture and reduced rainfall may have happened around this time. They also needed a lot of wood to cook lime plaster for their structures, so they were probably cutting down trees in huge numbers. It's believed that as many as 20 trees were needed for just one square meter of the cityscape. Number 2. The Kachabib. If you think that Donald Trump is the only person who can get a wall built, think again. There's a pretty impressive one in Jordan spanning about 93 miles, dating back to about 300 BC. Archaeologists used aerial photography to map out the massive short wall that today lies in ruins. It crossed the deserted valley of Jordan and has become known as Kat Shabib. 
Given that it's quite short, it's pretty obvious it wasn't used for defensive purposes, but we still don't know why it was built. It seems altogether intentional in its design, spanning from north-northeast to south-southwest, with sections of two wall sections running together side by side. Walls sometimes branch off each other. It would have been about 3.3 feet tall and 1.6 feet wide when it was built, and the average person could have easily scaled it. We may not have any firm conclusions about why it was made, but it was probably to keep out animals. Some archaeologists also think it might have been a farmland boundary for nomadic farmers. Number 1. The Kokno Stone If you live in or have visited Glasgow, Scotland, were you aware of the enormous 43-foot, 5,000-year-old stone slab with swirling geometric patterns buried in the ground? It's known as the Kokno Stone, and it has decorations described as cup and ring marks. It's also been known to people of the area since around the 19th century. Today, the stone slab is buried in the ground, but it was unearthed entirely in 1887. By 1965, people had vandalized it and the elements had damaged it, so archaeologists decided to cover it back up to protect it. They hoped to keep it in excellent condition until they could study it further at a later date. That later date arrived in 2016, and the re-excavation revealed graffiti from the 19th and 20th centuries and intentionally painted lines by archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann. Ludovic painted the lines to measure the artwork and see if it was linked to astronomical phenomena. He wanted to prove that symbols could predict eclipses, but his data disproved that theory. The artwork's meaning is still not known, but archaeologists were able to collect a lot of data during the most recent excavation, which means it may not be a mystery forever. It's actually quite spooky to think about how much we don't know versus how much we do. Some of these things are complete mysteries. Which one surprised you the most? You have any theories? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!